So there's this girl in school and a teacher notices that she's kind of down. You know, there's something off about this student because she's been around this student before. The teacher goes up to the student and says, hey, you know, you doing okay? How are things going? Uh, you seem a little, little down. What's going on? That student, you know, explains to the teacher, well, I'm turning 18 and my parents are kicking me out of the house once I turn 18 because they're saying that I'm going to be an adult. I'm really struggling, you know, in my classes. I'm not going to graduate my senior year before I'm supposed to get kicked out. Having a hard time focusing. Uh, I just feel like, you know, giving up and not really dealing with this anymore. And the teacher looked at her and said, listen, don't give up. Be proud of yourself because I'm proud of you. And I'm happy at the, how hard you've been working and you're worth it. And you deserve to keep going because you have so much in front of you. And the student broke down and started crying in the hallway in front of a bunch of people. This student was probably never told that they were, someone was proud of them. The student probably never heard that from anybody. The student may have just had, you know, really tough time and was dealing with a lot at the time, maybe stressed out with, you know, things that are going on. And to not give up and to just keep going. For someone to break down, you know, as easily as that uh, really shows you what can happen. This is based on a true story. Most of the conversation, I wasn't there for it, but I was told by a teacher that I know had a conversation with a student just similar to this situation. It was pretty much identical to it. Some of the stuff, uh, I obviously don't know the verbiage and the exact conversation. But one thing that this made me think of is there's not a lot of people out there that necessarily have those people in their life that are able to tell them, like, hey, they're proud of you. No, I know that life isn't easy. There's a lot of stuff that can come up and can really make things challenging. I always tell people that life is like a roller coaster. It's up, it's down. It's got its flat lines where you're really not feeling too much either. But it's so much better to do those things when you have somebody with you, with a friend, with a family member. Maybe you don't feel like you have those outlets. Well, I'm just letting you know right now, we've got a great community over on our Discord that is always willing to listen to anybody. We aren't professionals in the, you know, the mental health field, but we have our experiences to give. And because of this, I wanted to share some experiences and some things that I learned from my time in the military and what I learned about myself in my time in the military and how I learned how to deal with stress. Because I think that that student that broke down and was in tears, was stressed out with so much that was going on in her life that she just didn't know how to handle it. And her breaking down and having that emotional response is obviously indicative of just being you know, stressed out, anxious, tired. How did I deal with that stuff when I was in you know, the military and went through some tough things? To preface this, what I do wanna say, ladies and gentlemen, is that I am nothing special. I never deployed, I didn't do anything crazy. I worked in an office job for the most part because my legs were jacked up right away when I got to my unit. I pushed through injuries and training because I didn't want to recycle and start my training over. And because of that, I'm living with the consequences of those actions with my legs being uh, basically jacked up for the rest of my life. It sucks, but it's part of life. It is what it is. But during training, there's a lot of things that, you know, can kind of compound and, and really make things challenging. And you look at, man, I have this long, I have 10 weeks, I have 12 weeks, I have 17 weeks of training that I have to do. I went through basic training, officer candidate school, and then MP people, like military police basic officer leader course for officers to learn how to be military police officers. There was a lot that I learned about myself through stress, through the training, and through these successes and failures of my time there. The best advice I got was right before I left for basic training. Now you're in a room, you get sworn in by an officer. And after we were sworn in, the officer stayed there and he talked to us for a little bit and he said, live each day as if you focus on the meal. Meaning, all right, I made it to breakfast. Let's go ahead and push to lunch. Sweet, I made it to lunch. Okay, I know I can make it to dinner now. Made it to dinner, all right. Now I just gotta make it to breakfast. That broke the day up rather than looking at the day as one large mass that was absolutely horrifying to look at or to think about and it broke the day into segments and I was able to compartmentalize that and I know compartmentalizing can be hard for some people but it's really helped me out being able to break up my days when things were getting hard and I don't do this every single day but it helps me think about how I can push through pretty much anything. The second thing that I think really helped me out was being able to talk to anybody about the things I was feeling, the emotions. And even though some people may think of it as, oh, I'm weak for showing my emotions, I'm weak for doing this, for doing that, that's a bunch of bull. You know, especially I know that men are looked at a little bit differently in how we decide to uh, share our emotions. People look at it almost in a negative light when men are sharing their emotions. and. To be honest, like I have always been somebody that shares how I'm feeling, no matter what. And a lot of you that have tuned into my videos and my streams know that. But I think it's really important that we have that conversation as well. That 
when I was in basic, I was sharing to one of my friends that was there all the emotions I was feeling. And he was the reason that I was able to continue pushing through my training parts uh, for a lot of it because I was open and honest about how I was feeling. And it made me feel better having an outlet to talk to somebody about this stuff rather than just bottling it in and thinking that I can push through it all, all the time. Third thing, which is gonna be kind of different than the other two, was sleep. One of the best advice for sleep I was given was uh, relaxing, head to toe, all of your muscles. So as soon as my head would hit the pillow, I would literally stop, think about my entire body, all the muscle groups that start from the very top of my head all the way down to my toes and deliberately relax those muscles because I realized when I wasn't doing that, my shoulders were so tense when I would go to sleep that I would struggle to fall asleep because of this. And I found I was falling asleep a lot faster, a lot better. And pairing that up with obviously being exhausted from working out and, you know, doing so many different things, it just, it was great. The last thing that I will say is deliberate breathing. Now, deliberate breathing was incredibly, incredibly important. Now, the Army's website, they have the Army Ready and Resilient. They have deliberate breathing, improve your well-being. This was something that they taught us at basic training to have us do while we were there. And I have to say, out of all the things that I learned, this was easily one of the best ways to help me relax. I did this before all of my PT tests, all of my marksmanship, every single briefing that I would do, literally everything, every test that I took in my training, I did this. And it helped me out incredibly. And one of the things that they talk about is deliberate breathing is a simple but powerful skill you can practice every day to boost your energy levels and recover energy. It can be used to improve your performance two to three breaths to get your focus on present and balance your energy and or speed up your recovery 10 to 20 minutes of breathing to boost the rest, rest and digest response. So what does this mean? Basically, what I would do is I would stop and just breathe and just nice slow breaths, you know, two to three times before and that nervousness that I would feel right before I was about to do something that I was scared or anxious about would go away for at least a little bit. It would just, it would go away for a second and it let me think and just stop for a second and just be present and understand in the moment that it is time to knock out what I need to do. Everything, all the nerves went away, and I just was taking that time that I was breathing to focus in and hone in on being as focused as I could be on doing the task at hand. Now, I know a lot of you are probably thinking this sounds like a bunch of BS, but ladies and gentlemen, I'm nothing special. But I think some of these things might be able to help you manage some of your stress levels and manage some of your anxiety because it helped me personally. And I think I would be doing a disservice to people if I didn't share some of the things that I've personally experienced and had success on. Again, I am not a doctor. I am not a psychiatrist. I'm not somebody who's a mental health professional. But I can tell you that for me personally, in my experience, these things helped me dramatically. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for tuning in. I know this is a very different video than what we're doing. I just like to say thanks for tuning in. I appreciate you all. Hopefully we'll see you in the next video. If not, ladies and gents, I stream on Twitch Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and then Sundays, 7.30 p.m. Central Time. So be sure to tune in. I appreciate you all. Take it easy, take care, stay safe out there. See you later. I got the shivers.